Welcome back to another edition of the Daily Vlog. My name is Dr. David Dizer. Thank you so much for tuning in. On this channel, we talk about all things holistic health and wellness related. If you're interested in integrative medicine, holistic health and wellness, chronic disease management, please subscribe for more videos like this one. Today on the show, we're talking about a uh, continuous glucose monitor case study that I wanted to share with you guys. I do a lot of continuous glucose monitoring uh, in the in the clinic here now, as I'm able to provide my patients with this device uh, for two weeks of diet therapy and uh, we see great benefits, so I want to start sharing some cases with you when I can. Um, if you're not familiar, continuous glucose monitoring is a way of assessing your blood sugar when you have diabetes, or when you don't have diabetes, even if you just want to know what your blood sugar is doing, so you don't have to prick your finger. Typically, diabetic patients will prick their finger and test their blood sugar one hour and two hours after meals just to see what that meal specifically did to them, but it's a lot of work, and it hurts, and it's annoying, and um, it often will miss data that's important to overall wellness, like what happens within the first 30 minutes, for example, what happens at the three hour and four hour mark, what happens when you fast, what happens when you sleep, what's going on. Um, and so continuous gluc glucose monitoring is really helpful because you get to know exactly what your blood sugar is doing all day long, any day you're wearing the device. I'm wearing one right now. It's a little sticker with a little needle in it that you can't really see. It's kind of that little bump there, it's in my arm. You just take your iPhone and you just go like this and it tells you your blood sugar. It's delayed by 15 minutes versus the blood level. So if you prick your finger, this uh, uh, monitor would show that exact number 15 minutes later. So it's just a simple, um, a simple metric you have to look into when you have it. Uh, what's important about this monitor on that front is that after it gives you a, a number, it'll tell you if it's trending up or down. Um, over the last little while with an arrow and that arrow is important because if it's trending straight down it means you're going to drop three points in our Canadian system here within 30 minutes which would be significant if someone has just taken a bunch of insulin because that's uh, what's risky about very low calorie and low carb diets when you're on insulin so um, it gives you that information it gives you that feedback so you don't really need to prick your finger it's kind of nice to know if it's going straight down and say you're already at 4.0 you need to eat some food so that kind of information is really really helpful um, also, for on my side of things, it's really helpful to know if the arrow is pointing up on a diagonal or up straight. If it's up on a diagonal, you're going to get one to two points within 20 minutes or so. If it's up straight, it's going to go up three points um, within 30 minutes. And uh, we just, at that, that point, we have to, if we're not done the meal already, we need to stop the meal. So it's kind of interesting to see that kind of real time feedback um, for someone, uh, diabetics especially. And uh, today we're talking about a, a very simple case study that really I wanted to, to talk about because it highlights the value of mindful eating. And on the diabetic side, on the weight loss side specifically, it's being mindful of glycemic index or mindful of the impact of carbohydrates on your body, on your insulin levels, and on weight gain and therefore uh, the ability to lose weight. So this case study is a really simple one. We've got a a uh, 70 year old male, I've changed some of, some of his information to protect his privacy. A 70 year old male uh, named John. John uh, has type 2 diabetes and uh, needs to use insulin. And that's because his pancreas doesn't make enough insulin any longer to manage his blood sugar. So he has to use insulin uh, to help manage his blood, his blood sugar control and has never tried a continuous glucose monitor. He's just been pricking his finger six times a day. And um, we have weight to lose with John. So, you know, we're at 305 pounds and he has a history of a very difficult time losing weight. So what we want to do is we want to just track blood sugar over two weeks, kind of with uh, the diet plan that we're trying to have him follow. Historically, without continuous glucose monitoring, it's been very difficult to follow the diet plan. He has had experience where he's done really, really well, and then because it's been so restrictive, he's gone off the off the plan, and the weight has swung completely back. All the losses were then gained um, back. So there's a big yo-yo in the in the weight, which is not healthy for people overall, anyways, and definitely not helpful for John as he has a history of prostate cancer, with uh, testosterone suppression therapy being the solution. So, you know this. At this point in life, the, the, you know, working with an integrative doc like myself, uh, our our goal has been to help him lose weight so that he can get just healthier overall. Immune so immune function can improve, um, a hormone metabolism can improve, mood can improve, energy can improve. All these things can improve. 
uh, by getting that weight down. The weight's just too high. So what we're trying to do here is help the diabetes medications work better, reduce the need for insulin, and help with weight loss. So we did a two-week trial of a continuous blood sugar to continuous glucose monitor, and here's what happened. Without commenting on the use of insulin, because his, his use didn't change that much, he lost seven pounds. Without talking about exactly what he ate, he lost seven pounds. Without going through everything that we did differently, he lost seven pounds in two weeks. It's incredible. Here are the details that you need to know. Over these two weeks, John didn't significantly cut his carbohydrates in a way that you would think, or even calories for that matter, in a way that you would think would be conducive to losing seven pounds. Yes, he's at 305, so to lose seven pounds doesn't seem like that much, but when you've been yo-yoing and it's been so difficult to lose weight and keep it off, these two weeks were very important. They're very important because he didn't change his diet very much. All he did was look at how the foods he was consuming impacted his blood sugar and then made subtle adjustments by choosing things that were lower glycemic, by choosing lesser portions of high glycemic foods, by uh, if he had a high blood sugar spike, he would then not have a high carb meal later in the day. So we would make these reactive decisions based on how the day was going so far. If he emotionally ate for a while, he then fast for 13 hours. If he had a, had a, had a treat meal, one week, the next week he didn't have one. So basically we have our rules in place that we use with diabetics, um, specifically insulin, uh, insulin using diabetics um, because they're, it's, a, it's a bit of a, a more difficult therapy than when you're not using insulin because there's a little more things you have to be careful of. A few more things you have to be careful of, like for example, prolonged fasting and very, very low calorie diets. Those are um, contraindicated and, and need to be medically supervised. But in his case, um, we were able to, to very subtly make changes reactively day to day and keep his quality of life normal and his meal times normal and his meal choices relatively normal for what he was doing prior and he was able to lose seven pounds and I think this is a huge feat because my question to him when he came back in and we saw these results was could you do this forever really could you eat like the way you ate the last two weeks could you do that forever and be happy and the answer was yes and I love that question because I always get an, I always get an honest response, which is what I'm looking for. Um, I very often will get a, a no, no, I can't do that. It was too restrictive. It's too difficult. And then we try to make changes to make it easier. In this case, the answer was yes. Looking at his, his, his glycemic control, his blood sugar control over the two weeks, the average glucose was lower than his previous A1C. A1C is a marker of three months average glucose. Over those last two weeks, his level was lower than three months prior. Therefore, we think this next A1C is gonna come back lower. So we think his overall blood sugar control over three months is gonna be less. Meanwhile, he's gonna lose weight. His quality of life was not significantly impacted. His insulin usage will go down over time. Uh, I'm just really excited about this case because what I'm always trying to do is make things very, very simple for people and I find that continuous glucose monitoring does that. It's like when you wear a Fitbit. You know people who wear Fitbits and they're obsessed with getting 10,000 steps. And they'll do it, like they'll leave their house at 10 p.m. and go walk, just to get that 10,000 steps. When you're wearing a continuous glucose monitor, it is that motivating. If you have, for example, a breakfast that you think may spike your blood sugar, you look at it and it did, the next morning you, you don't eat that breakfast. You just don't do it because you know you're gonna have the negative impact that it, that, it, that, it, that it had on you. You're gonna have exactly the same negative impact. Um, so also the, the things that happen like you might decide to make subtle changes to the meal and, and see if it's any better it becomes an exciting kind of game to challenge yourself with to eventually get healthier overall we know there's a big difference between having an a1c of 7 or 8 to an a1c of 6.0 in terms of long-term health outcomes we know that um, getting off of insulin is better than being on insulin we know that uh, being a leaner body weight is better than being in the overweight or obese category now in terms of BMI. So we have all these things we can try to shoot for and we can have real time feedback uh, for your specific diet with this device. So I'm excited about it. And these type of case studies are not um, rare. These things happen all the time. I have another one that just came in today that I'd love to share uh, 
with you in the next little while about um, significant A1C drop. So, you know, we're looking at when um, someone has an A1C of say 6.8, 7.2, when they wear this machine for two weeks, their average glucose is definitely lower than that if they're also trying to get healthier overall, which most people who will wear it are. Um, and if they aren't, over the, after the few days of wearing it, they'll get motivated because it's quite inspiring, similar to that Fitbit idea. So this is a case study I want to share with you, seven pounds weight loss in two weeks using a diet that this person thinks they could do forever. So that's really exciting for me and I, I, I love it. So thank you so much for watching. If you like videos like this one, please subscribe uh, for more uh, of these. I'm going to do as many as I possibly can per week. Thanks for tuning in. My name is Dr. David Dyser, and I'm a naturopathic doctor in Vancouver, British Columbia. Okay, talk soon. Thanks.